Everyone faces career setbacks. The actual cost of career setback could be less, provided we handle the emotional cost well. It is the emotional cost which compounds the problem and makes it more damaging. It leaves a mental scar when professionals feel capped, sidelined, demoted or lose their job. If you watch CEOs, leaders and entrepreneurs, they all have faced career setback. Even some have lost their reputation where the cost is even higher from professional and social perspective. So let's take the example of Jamie Dimon who was fired from the president of Citigroup and now he is a successful CEO of JP Morgan Chase. HBR research analyzed 450 CEO succession from publicly listed company and they found that 35% of ousted CEOs came back to an active executive role within two years of their departure. But 43% effectively ended their career. They could not bounce back from their setback. And the reason is either they blame themselves or blame others, live in the past, never look at the future. The ones who bounce back and overcome setback mentally frame the setback differently in order to avoid disruption to their good sense and judgment. From stoic philosophers to modern psychologists, they all know that whenever they face any setback, they mentally frame the setback right in order to look at the situation differently. Let me ask you one question. If your manager is asking you to choose which project to work on, where in the first one, there is an 85% chance that your project is going to install at client location. And in the second one, there is a 15% chance that the client will reject the project. Without blinking, you are going to choose the first one. Because if you will work on that project, it is going to add feather to your cap. But those who are rational, they know that the 85% success rate is same as 15% failure. But we humans are not purely rational. We choose the one which sounds attractive and in setback, we imagine the worst. Our work life is full of setbacks. And when we face a setback, our subconscious mind frame the event in such a way where maximum number of negative emotions flow and put us in, in a blame frame. And that is why we start blaming our manager, co-worker, work environment, office politics, bad luck or wrong timing. Famous stoic philosopher Seneca said, it is not how the wrong is done that matters, but how it is taken. So watch my video until the end where I'm going to share five mental frames which you have to apply to overcome setback and achieve new height in your career. And if you have not already liked and subscribed to my channel, which is having more than 100 videos, then please do it. Also watch my other video, I am lucky. You can also get lucky. So as soon as you face any setback, take a pause and depending upon the situation, apply one of the following five mental frames. First, winning frame. Some setbacks are quite serious loss of job, loss of reputation, juniors superseding you in promotion, you are transferred to a less important role, some of your responsibilities are taken away and you landed up in mentally stressful situation and so on. In these situations you think, why me? Why it is happening to me? Once my manager wanted to hire a candidate who has worked with him in the previous organization. He wanted to take away some of my responsibilities and reduce my sphere of influence and worse, he was doing it surreptitiously. I had an option to get agitated, angry and take my manager head on. But then I decided I will take this setback as a game which I had to win. I countered his politics by marshalling all my strengths and focus it in a right way. I reached out to all my stakeholders and made them realize that this move is going to be counterproductive for them in order to achieve their own goals. And they should convince my manager against such move. It ran for few months and later on I succeeded. I know under these circumstances you might feel helpless, clueless and then give away. But you remember that during your school days, whenever you play any game, you have an intention to win. So take these type of setbacks as a game which you have to win. Second, humor frame. At times we all do blunders, missing key customer requirement, framing an email wrongly, misinterpreting an email and so on. I was in the USA and my newborn daughter had got chicken pox. That was the last day and I had to make a software release 
to an important customer in Europe. I started the file transfer and with the distracted mind to reach home, I switched off the computer. Next day morning it was tense. I got scared, apologized and said, I expected the switched off computer to complete the file transfer. That joke saved the day and I restarted the file transfer. So at times when you face any setback, you have to do humor at your own expense and apologize. Third, priority frame. A highly visible project came to my manager which I wanted to work upon but my manager gave it to my colleague. Normally, you will start blaming your manager for bias or favoritism and with that mindset, you will conduct one-to-one -one meeting with your manager which will end up becoming counterproductive and damaging. Instead, I thought there must be some legitimate reason why my manager has given it to my colleague, why my manager has prioritized my colleague over me. And with that mindset, I went and had my one-to-one -one meeting with my manager. And by seeing my openness, my manager was much more forthcoming in giving the reason behind why he has chosen my colleague over me. It does not mean that you should not be firm in your ask. You must voice your concern. You must explain why it was important for you to work upon. But do it in a positive way and try to understand others' perspective. By doing this, you are not carrying forward your angst and thus you are not spoiling your future opportunities. We all apply priority frame whenever we have just one thing and there are a good number of people who are asking for it and so does our manager. Fourth, incompetence frame. There are times when you are working on a project where there is a high level of interdependency with your co-worker. Your work has suffered due to late deliverable from your co-worker. You might become upset, angry, shout at him and also spoil your interpersonal relationship. Instead, you can think that your co-worker is not trained well. Your co-worker is incompetent and might take time to improve. By thinking this way, you are removing your negative emotion. Certainly, you must reach out to your stakeholder and explain the reason without pointing an accusing finger on your co-worker. This maturity will earn kudos and you also learn to be vigilant to avoid this last minute goof up with such co-workers. And fifth, testing times frame. There are certain setbacks for which you just cannot do anything. Instead of getting flooded with negative emotions, you should think that nature is testing you and your patience. You need to be resilient during this period. Take care of your mental and physical health and do whatever is in your control. Everyone faces such type of rough patches in their life, but eventually it gets over. And once it gets over, then you will emerge victorious, better and stronger because you have faced such a difficult life experiences. This optimism will take you forward. So professionals, you have seen that whenever you face any setback, apply one of these five mental frames to overcome it and achieve new height in your career. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.